everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. If we've painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today's video is on how to paint ferns. So let's take a look at the supplies that we'll be using today and we will jump right in. So we have two colors of paint. We have Thicket and we have Juneberry. These are folk art multi-surface paints. This is not a sponsored video. I just like to share with you guys the paints that I use and that I've used for years and that I know work well with this method of painting. So the neat thing about multi-surface is that it works great no matter what you're painting on. So whether you're painting on a glass vase or a canvas or a clay pot, any surface will work with this multi-surface, which is great. Um, it's a little bit thicker than a lot of the craft paints that are out there, which is nice. And it also has a little bit of a sealer in it. So Highly recommend the multi-surface. It just, it's great when you can have one paint and you can paint a multitude of surfaces. So I'm a big fan. Um, the brush we're using today, we have a number 12 flat brush. Okay. Um, whatever size flat brush you guys have at home will work just fine. And just so you guys know, in the description of the video, I will link all of the supplies that we use. I'll have a description in there. So if you ever need to look back and go, what color did we use for that? Or what size brush? It's all in the description for you. So you don't have to worry about memorizing it all <laughs> right now as we're getting ready to paint. Okay, let me move these out of the way. And we have a couple other things that we're gonna use today. We have our styrofoam plate. This is our very fancy paint palette. So I already have my puddles on here. We'll talk about that um, in just a sec for you getting yours on your plate, but just really inexpensive, just a styrofoam plate here. On the table, we have wax paper. And I'm a big fan of wax paper. If you've painted with me before, you know this. It's just such a nice, smooth surface when you're first beginning to kind of master how your brush strokes look and it's very affordable you can buy a, a roll of wax paper for you know a couple dollars so i'm a big fan of keeping it affordable and easy because i want you guys to paint i want you to paint at home so we make it as easy as we can so that's here and so whether you paint with me live and in person um at one of my events or here on youtube there will always be the wax paper Okay, let's see what else. Off in the distance here is just a brush basin that just has water in it for rinsing our brushes. And I got a couple paper towels here off to the side. And that's really about it. That's all you need to get started. So let's take a look at some of our inspiration pieces for today. And then we will hop right in playing with our paint and start building these ferns. So here is just kind of an example. This is just cardstock. Okay, just a heavier paper there. And this is sort of an example of a fern that's trailing down. So the basic components are, and, and we're going to get to this here in just a sec on our wax paper, are you draw first where you want your lines to be, and we'll do that together, and then you add the leaves. So this is as if the, the fern was trailing down, okay? I have another example here. It's a little bit different. This one's on a glass vase, so i got to tilt it a little bit. But here the ferns are coming from the bottom and coming up. Okay, same principle, it's just where you started and where it ends, but the way you build these ferns is exactly the same. All right, and I have a couple other projects I'll show you too at the end just for inspiration, giving you some ideas of things you can craft and create at home. So let's get our paint on our plate, if you guys want to grab that. And we need a puddle of each color, so we have a puddle of thicket and a puddle of Juneberry. The important part is you leave a space in between your puddles here, and I, I usually start off with about the size of a quarter. You can always add more paint if you need to, um, but definitely you need this space because here in just a minute we're going to do something called double loading, and that's how we put both of these colors, so two colors of paint, on one paintbrush. And the neat thing, and you'll see when we get started, is you get color highlight shading all in one stroke just by doing this double loading that we're going to do. Okay, so go ahead and get your blobs of paint and let's grab our paintbrush and let's get some paint on here. All right, so for double loading, you're going to hold your brush straight up and down and we are going to dip one corner, one half in the green. Okay, and the other side, the other half or corner in the June berry. And then here on your plate with the green by the green and the berry by the berry, you're going to touch that brush, you're going to push it down towards you, and you're going to slide towards you and push away, and towards you and push away. And we're creating what's called a blending spot, okay? So each time, and we're going to do this, gosh, probably three or four times, you guys, dip each corner and you come back to the same spot and blend. And you can see my bristles are really, really pushed down. Can you see how they are all the way down to the plate? You want to work that paint all the way up into the brush, which is what we're doing. Now, 
as people first try this method with me, one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people will come and dip and then do a spot here and dip and then do a blending spot here. We don't really want to do that. Each time you want to come right back to the same spot because the goal here is to work this paint up into the brush. It's not to paint our plate. <laughs> we have we have more fun things to paint than our plate. So each time you come dip each corner and then blend back and forth. Okay. And like I said, probably three or four times, you guys, you want a lot of paint up on this brush. That'll just make things flow for you much better. That's another thing um, as far as troubleshooting when people are first starting is a lot of times I find they just don't have enough paint on the brush to really make the brush glide and do the strokes that they want to do. So lots of paint. Now as we're painting you guys will feel when you need to pick up more paint and every time you'll do exactly what we just did. So we'll be painting, you'll grab your plate, dip each corner, blend the exact same way we did and then you keep painting. And you guys will get a feel as we're practicing when you need more paint, so. All right, let's go ahead and get our paint loaded. I'm gonna put mine off to the side here, but I will come back to it often. You will see, I reload my paint very frequently. I like having fresh paint and fresh color while we're doing this. Okay, so as far as building the fern, what we want to do, and we talked about this, I'm going to bring back this sample. I'm going to hold it a different direction. I find when you're first starting to do these strokes, it works the best when you're pushing away, okay, leading away. And we're going to practice on here so you can see. So even though I would want this on my finished project to look like it's hanging down, when I'm painting it, I am going to start from the bottom and push up. So if I were doing this, let's say on a glass vase, and I wanted it so that the ferns were hanging down from the top, I am actually going to paint it upside down. I hope that makes sense. So I would actually start at what's the top of the vase and push down so that when I set it upright, the ferns were coming down this way. Okay, and we'll talk more about placement and that sort of thing. But just know, as we're starting this, I find it much easier if you push away when you're first getting the hang of this. Now, if you've been doing this a while or you're feeling pretty confident, you can go any direction you want. <laughs> I'm just trying to troubleshoot those errors before we even start, okay? So here's here's our inspiration, and we're gonna kinda go from that. All right, so we have our brush, and we are gonna start by just drawing basically a stem, because you wanna place where it is you want these this fern to go or where these leaves are going, okay? So we are gonna start with our brush straight up and down. In this case, I have the green closest to me um, and the, the berry color pushing away. You'll see as we do this, the dominant color that you're gonna see is whichever is on the bottom, whichever is closest to you. So I, I wanna see mostly green when we're starting off. So brush straight up and down. We are gonna skate right along this edge. This is a, a narrow chiseled edge, we call that. All right, and we're just gonna be right up on the edge and we're just gonna push forward. We're just doing a line, okay? So I'm gonna start here. I wanna make sure we're in the camera here. All right, I'm gonna to touch down. I'm not gonna push down hardly at all. We're just barely touching the surface. And I'm going to come up and just kind of do a line. Okay. I did a little wiggle there, but that's okay. All right. And I'm going to do one more over here just so we have a couple different things we can practice on. Okay. So straight up and down. Now your handle, this brush handle should be pointing to the ceiling. Okay. You want it straight up and down. If you're leaning to the left or leaning to the right, this line is going to get much wider. So you don't want to push down and you don't want to lean that handle straight up and down. And let's just do another line here. Okay, and then I'm gonna lift up. So nothing fancy, this is just our stem. We're, we're not even gonna see a lot of this by the time we're done, but that gives us our placement. So now we know the direction we're going. Okay, so like if we were doing this vase, we would start here and push straight up. Okay, so as far as the leaves go, they're not really essentially like a a full-blown leaf. Um, I do have, if, if you're struggling with the basic leaf, if you've tried those, um, I do have a video dedicated just to the basic leaf. You can check that out. That's really kind of a just helpful basic video on how to do leaves. This isn't quite that elaborate. This is going to be more of just kind of a push and lift. Um, and we'll, we'll practice here in just a minute, but we're just going to kind of go up one side of the stem and up the other side. So here's our basic move. What we're going to do is we're going to start right by the base of the stem. And if I were doing a full blown leaf, there'd be like a little bit of a twisting involved. We're not going to do that. We're going to touch and I'll show you. We're going to push down, slide and lift up, but we're not going to twist or turn or anything. So let's start right by our stem here and I'm going to touch. Now I still have the green on the bottom. Okay. 
I'm going to touch the green is just right here at the stem. I'm going to touch, push down just a little bit. I'm sliding up and then I'm lifting. Okay. Um, let me show you another one here. So we're just going to touch. I'm going to push down just a little bit. I'm not even pushing all the way down as I'm sliding. I'm lifting and you can see my brush is lifting. I have not lifted off the wax paper though. Okay. So let me do, let's do another one here. Just, and then we'll add them to our stem. So your touch straight up and down, you're leaning just a little bit forward, slide as you're sliding, you're lifting up on the brush, but it does not lift off the surface. Okay, we're gonna practice this many, many times. You guys will get a feel. All right, so this is the base of my fern. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work our way up. So again, I'm touching this green is gonna be right here by the stem. And you want it, you know, next to the one that you just did, it's okay if you leave a little space in between just to kind of give a little airiness there. So I'm just gonna come up a little bit before, or a little bit before, a little bit above, and I'm gonna to touch. And remember, we're working our way up. You're just going straight forward, okay? Touch, push down just a little bit, and as you're sliding, you lift. You notice my brush did not turn, we didn't curve. You just touch, push down as you're sliding up, and then lift up. And remember, you don't pull that up from the surface until you're at the top of that leaf. Okay, so we're just gonna work our way up. Okay, touch, push down, slide, lift up. And you're just gonna work your way up. Okay, my hand is not rotating. I'm not turning, I'm not twisting. It's not even, even when we do our basic leaf that if you've seen that one, we do just a little bit of a, like a quarter turn. We're not even doing that in this one, okay? It's just literally pushing up. The difference is you start swished, but then you lift your, you kind of glide up on your brush. All right, let's finish this guy. So we're gonna be here, push down, slide, lift up. And you're just coasting on that edge. And then at the top, I'm gonna have one that goes straight up, okay? Now we do on the other side. So you'll get your line. You'll do leaves on one side, and then we're gonna come up and do the other side, okay? Now this one, you can do a couple different ways. If it's hard for you to kind of get the angle going to the left, you can turn your, your practice sheet upside down and kind of do it a different way, but it's just as easy to do the same thing. Now, I really like when you do the other side to stagger it a little bit. So like this leaf started here, so I wanna start him just a little bit above, okay? You can certainly have them side by side so they're symmetrical, that's just fine. And as you look at some of my examples, you'll see that. But when you're doing um, ferns, try to kind of stagger. So this one's just a little bit higher starting where this one is. All right, and you guys probably noticed I did a few leaves and then I came back and we had to reload, okay? And you'll notice each time I'm still on that same original blending spot, okay? One thing I will tell you, it will happen. The more painting you do, you will come back to reload and you will dip in the wrong puddle. Happens all the time. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, you will dip in the wrong puddle. If that happens, you just grab your paper towel, wipe it off, and then reload and continue back where you were. So not a big deal. <laughs> It will happen. All right, so I'm just gonna reload. Okay, so now we're gonna start on this side and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna follow that line up, okay? So I'm touch, push down, slide up, and you're just gonna do this all the way up. And remember, kind of stagger them. They don't have to be just certain, you know, right next to each other. It's okay if they don't connect. I mean, you want them next to the stem, but they don't have to be right next to that leaf that is on the other side, okay? All right, let's go here. Let's do another, another just for practice. And you guys, this is the beauty of, well, a couple things, of wax paper, because you can just practice all over this wax paper, grab a new sheet, practice all over that wax paper as many times as you need to. The other thing that's nice is if you're watching at home on YouTube, you can start and stop and rewind and stop. And that's just the best thing about doing this at home is that you can stop and start and rewind as many times as you need to. So that's a wonderful thing. Okay, so remember we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna go up one side of the stem and then up the other side. All right, so I am gonna start here at the bottom. My brush is straight up and down. The green is closest to me. The berry is on top. We're just gonna touch, push down, slide, lift up. And you're just gonna do that all the way up. 
push down, slide, lift up. Remember, you're just coasting on that edge. We don't lift the brush until we're at the end of the leaf. And then I'm going to come to the top and go straight up. Okay, so we go up one side and now let's go up the other side. So remember, we talked about staggering. I like it if you just start a little bit higher than that first one we did. So we're going to be straight up and down. We're going to push, slide, lift up. And you're just going to go all the way up that stem. And you guys will feel when you need to pick up paint. I'm actually running a little bit low on paint, but we're almost here. And this is practice, so it's okay. Okay. All right. So let me lift this up just so you can see it a little bit. And then we'll talk about placement and how you're doing on your projects. Okay, so you guys can kind of see. Now, more traditionally, you would probably do green and white. I just really liked how this wine color looked and just a little different perspective for you. But so you can see. So remember, we started with the lines. And again, you guys, you'll find which way works for you doing these leaves. But when you're first starting out, I find it really helpful if you start at the bottom and push up. It just gives you nice control. It doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed. Um, you can see where your petals are headed. Sometimes if you try going different directions, it can get a little, a little wonky. And when you're first starting out, it can be very frustrating. So my recommendation is get master where you can do your line and do your leaves going this way. And then as you feel more comfortable, then you can practice and, and, and do them upside down in all the different directions. But, you know, my goal is get you making these little slide leaves and go one direction. Okay. All right. One more look at this guy. And then we will go back to, this was our inspiration that we started with. These are actually the same colors. This is the Thicket and the Juneberry. And this one was painted more of a, a trailing down. So you could get all your lines in place. And honestly, they could kind of cross over and intermingle. And then you would just follow each line down, adding leaves on one side and then down the other. So if we were painting this for the first time, and this is kind of your first time trying this, I would start here, do your line coming up, and then your other line, and then add the leaves. Remember, pushing away. Okay, let's take a look. We got a couple other things here. So we talked about the vase. So that's what this guy is. And this fern, I wanted them coming up from the bottom. So we started at the bottom of the vase and came up. Okay, and then we just added some leaves. And that's actually a little tiny ladybug there just thrown on just for cuteness. Okay, and there's some other greenery on this vase, but here again is your your basic vine coming up. Okay. This one, same pattern, same pattern. It's just on an oil bottle. Okay, you can see the little top there. So this just has one coming up, and again, that cute little ladybug is, is on there. Okay, so just some project ideas. And you guys remember we talked about multi-surface. It doesn't matter what you're painting on, whether it's glass or a piece of cardstock or a canvas. Oh, I do have a canvas to show you too. Um, but this paint is great for that. Now here is just kind of a different view. This is a, a glass bottle. So in the background, if you can see, are the ferns. Okay, and see how they're all sort of a background. This is like a, a really pretty like soft apple color with white for the leaves. And then on top of it, we have yellow and white daisies. So in this case, the fern is used not as the main focus, but as a filler. And it's really neat for that. I think a tall vase or on a wine glass, any of those kind of things where you use the fern as maybe the background um, and then do some tall flowers next to it, super cute. So it's really great for a filler project too. Okay, I have one more thing. It's a canvas though. It's a little bigger. So let me let me pull this out. This is just really neat. We did this one years ago at an in-person event that I did. So this is an 11 by 14, so it's a pretty good size. But we've got a couple different greenery. So we actually painted the canvas black and then did a couple assorted like little ferns and some greenery. Um, I do have another video on my channel with greenery. So you can look at that in grasses. So that's another neat thing. Um, but here's our ferns. And this was a little bigger paintbrush. So um, I think it was a three, it might have been a a three quarter flat. So a lot bigger fern, obviously, because we're covering a big surface here. And then there's a couple dragonflies, which I also have a video for on my channel. Um, but so here's just kind of a compilation where you've got, you know, different ferns in different styles. But here's the one that we practiced today, just kind of going up. So again, just a different perspective and a different surface, which is neat. All right. Well, Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this fern video. I hope it gave you another greenery um, that you can kind of add to your 
your repertoire, if you will, because we've done um, a basic leaf video. We've done wiggle leaves. We did most recently an angular like fall leaf video. So this is kind of just another another thing that you have to add to your your flowers and your different greeneries and that sort of thing. So I hope you practice this one and I hope it was fun and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did enjoy the video, if you would hit that like button, that would be amazing. That lets me know that you watched it and you enjoyed it. And then there is also a subscribe button. If you would consider hitting that, um, that will let you know the next time a video gets uploaded to my channel keep you up to date on all the fun things we're doing there are so many more fun things coming you guys so stay tuned because we're getting into some fun holiday things now um, I'm just really excited to share all these different projects with you so hit that subscribe button and it'll let you know when we add our next video and as always if you guys have any questions or anything you'd like to see in the future please please feel free to put that in the comment section I love reading the comments I love when you guys send me messages and I love being able to help troubleshoot you know if there's problems along the way as you're first getting started. I don't want anybody to be frustrated. This is supposed to be fun and relaxing. So that's that. All right, you guys, and don't forget all the supplies and everything we use will be in the description of the video. So thank you guys so very much for coming. I hope you had fun. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.